Suspension Development Group today to pick the Class 10 car shocks. And while we're here, we're gonna to talk to Jason inside who's gonna tell us what the heck shocks even are. So this is Jason Duncan. He is one of the owners of SDG and a guru when it comes to shocks. So while we're waiting for ours to be finished, we got a couple questions for Jason to help us understand the black magic that is shocks. First of all, what what is it? How does a shock work? Like what what is it doing inside? So all it's doing is manipulating the oil that goes through a piston and valving. So there's a piston that goes onto the shaft of a shock. This okay, is in, this is inside the body. Inside the body, going up and down, and there's fluid. It's encapsulated encapsulated in fluid. Then there's a valve stack that's on both sides of this of this shock. Okay. And then as the fluid comes through, it's bending this shim up that they call it the fulcrum of the of the shim stack. Okay. And we manipulate the flow with thicker or thinner shims. Got it. And, and it's one side is for going extending and one side is for compressing the shock. Is correct. That what it is? Okay. Correct. So the okay. holes that the fluid goes through on this side would open a stack on the on back the side. On the opposite side. Exactly. So the rebound stack is on top. Okay. Compression stacks on the bottom because you want, as the shot goes up, it pushes fluid through these holes I and see. tries to bend yeah, this bends open. Bends that, okay. Yep, it's like a valve and a hose. So the okay. shape of these holes, how many and where they are, and the diameter, the thickness, and the number of these shims determines how much compression and rebound yes. you get driving. Yeah, and there's a million different variations of oh, how man, you can do that. Yep. Because yep. there's the thickness, the diameter, there's a rate plate, okay. there's a pivot shim. Oh geez, now we're getting in the weeds. Inside the piston, there's bleed holes that, that a lot of people miss, but oh. that's flow and it adds to the entire okay. picture of the So do these parts, these internal parts, do they wear out often? Or is it like, how does... so? How, with a, with a shock and wear items, what uh -huh. they do is, there's a wear band on the piston, and what this does is it takes up the space between the aluminum and the steel body. Okay. And so this goes up and down, and it starts to wear away this coating that's on a copper ring. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of the wear items, because you don't want this to wear out. There's a very tight tolerance between this and the body, and you don't want it to get to the aluminum. There's yeah. also O-rings. And this is also sealing, I'm assuming, yes. forcing the fluid through here. So if this Correct. wears, you're gonna get fluid bypassing. Yep. Which then you'll get shock fade. Okay. The, the, the more okay. that the O-rings go away, the, the, the wear band goes away, mm -hmm. it's going to bypass this piston. Got it. Uh, allowing more flow, causing less restriction. Got it. So a lot of the hard parts don't wear that much, but there is a lot of components inside that do wear Correct. quite a bit. Okay. Correct. And over time, there's the shims, because we are bending them, they can bend open and then start to stay. So when you start to put this on here, it might not stay flat. Therefore, the metal has memory and it can stay flexed okay. open. Therefore, we would need to replace a stack once it goes away. Um, so, some other items would be, there's there's a bushing inside here that the shaft rides on. You would replace this, this DU bushing. There's uh, sphericals, which this is on the rod end. And so as the shot goes up and down, it's putting force on this, going back and forth. You get water, you get dirt, and it gets in this little bushing. And as it's going back and forth, it's gonna wear the Teflon out inside And these, just to back up one quick sec, these are the guys that live on each end of the shock that yes. connects the suspension and the chassis? Yep. Okay. This is what connects the bolt from the chassis to the shock. Okay. And when these go out, you wanna stay on top of them because when this wears out, it turns into like a slide hammer. It's beating, beating the steel itself. and it's gonna open the, the end of the eyelet. So inside here, this is pressed into here. When this slops out, it's gonna open the aluminum, thus this won't be tight in there anymore. I see. And then if you w wait too long, then you have to replace this. This is a lot more expensive than this. So th there's obviously two groups of people, right? You yeah. service racers and you service weekend warriors. Yes. For the racer to begin with, kind of what, what is the service interval for them that you guys like to see for, for taking the shocks all the way down, replacing all the stuff you just talked about, putting it back together? We recommend that they rebuild them before any critical race. Okay. It's not a matter of, of miles or hours. There's also heat cycles. So as you heat it up and it cools down, the O-rings will start to get brittle. And I would assume the fluid's the same thing too, Correct, right? correct. And everything's designed to go a long time. Most of this is preventative. It's, you wanna make sure there's no ding in a shaft. You wanna make sure that there's there's nothing that failed inside the shaft. And when you say shaft. ding in a shaft, you're talking about the, the actual piston shaft that you can see from 
outside yes. the shock. Outside the shock. Yep, because when this goes onto here, there's a seal in here, and that seal keeps fluid from coming out. Okay. If there's a ding in the shaft, it's going to cut that seal, causing it to and leak. Now you have a leak. Yep, and this, the, the bushing inside here, the reason why it's important to change that is that can help fix a ding. If it goes in one time, that might buff the ding out so it doesn't continue to eat Got it. the seal. And we don't want those dings because now we got a leak, which means we're losing fluid, yes. we're losing pressure, and eventually the shock just doesn't work anymore. Work. So that's okay. why I say most of it's preventative. The oil's designed to go a long ways. The right. O-rings are designed to go a long ways. But for a racer, any important race, how much which you is spend, almost every person. Yes, race. yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it, you want to make sure that this is just as important as any of your other components. Uh, we treat these like an engine. That's why we take them apart yeah. completely every time. Now, if you're not a racer, if yep. you're like, if you're this guy, and yes. you bought yourself a new UTV, you're a weekend warrior, is there a service interval for that guy? We, we recommend, depending on how hard you drive uh -huh. and what you're doing, it's a thousand for every hard driver. A thousand. So a thousand miles, a thousand for, miles. A, for a guy that okay. drives hard. If you drive it like a race car, you want to do it every thousand miles. We'll do every 2,000 if it's just a weekend warrior and you're just cruising because heat cycles are just as important. It's not a matter of the miles, mm -hmm. it's also the heat cycles. So then if you really are just a cruiser and grandpa's just driving it, uh -huh. that you could get three. I probably wouldn't go past three, but you can go three to five until you start to feel or see something. So and that, that's... if we were gonna equate that to time, and I know it's hard to do it, yeah. we would be maybe like once a season for a guy that drives really hard, yes. and maybe two or three seasons for someone that's kind of mellow? Yep, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Say you, you buy a used car, like, like you just picked this up, but yep. it's not, you're not the first owner. How can you tell if, if what you have right now, if the shocks need to be serviced now? So what you would do is inspect to see if there's any dings in the shafts. You see if anything's leaking. You can, you can jack the, the car up off the ground and see if these sphericals are worn out. And like, is that by using like a, a pry bar yes. or something? You try against the arm yep. to see if it has movement? That or just shake the shock. If it's really okay. bad, you're gonna know right away that okay. it's sloppy uh -huh. and you'll want to replace that. Okay. Um, if you see anything or feel anything. So if it feels soft, it's just bottoming out or it's just not reacting the it's way not you- Not compliant or sluggish, yes. it kind of rolls over on it. Yes. Okay. Um, and that can be due to the, either the shock needs a rebuild or it's just a stock shock that it doesn't work as good as a car that you've ridden. Needs we, to be upgraded, which exactly. I think you guys do that as well, right? There's yes. kits, there's all kinds of tuning. You've done just about every chassis, so you kind of <laughs> yes. know yep. how to get it there real fast. Absolutely, and what we've done is we have applied our knowledge from the trophy trucks, from the class one cars, the race cars, and we've developed a kit that we call race inspired wife approved. It's a kit that if you're gonna go race it, uh -huh. it's a race kit. Yeah. But it's the same kit I'm gonna sell your wife to uh -huh. go to Glamis and take her friends out. If the shock is tuned right, it doesn't need to be specific to the application. What is a bypass? Because you hear that term, it's not a regular shock that carries a coil. It's got a whole bunch of extra stuff. Can you kind of go over what this stuff is and kind of how it, yep. how it works? And so how it functions is very similar to the way a normal shock works with uh -huh. a coil over on it, uh -huh. but it has this tube on the side with a valve. And the reason why they call it a bypass is because it's bypassing the piston with fluid, causing it to allow flow and less restriction in a zone that you can control. And for this instance, this has uh, two compression tubes and two rebound tubes. The length of the tube matters because as the piston comes up, it's pushing through both tubes. The fluid's coming out of the tube and back in behind the tube. You're, ma you're manipulating the flow mm -hmm. by closing a valve or opening it. But it works through both of them until the tube ends. Then it goes to one tube, restricting that's the flow that's longer. Got it. And the compression ones, you can tell because the valve points down. They point down. The rebound ones, valve point points up. up. Exactly. And it's just literally a valve restricting flow the valve and a back seat. in. Yep. Okay. You you do want to run both when you can. Mm -hmm. One of the when things. When space permits. When space what permits. Doing. And one thing that's happened with the side by sides, this is a side by side of 20, 30 years ago. If you think about it, this is the evolution of yep. what's happened. This yep. is this was the trophy truck back then. Now you can buy this from a side-by-side -side manufacturer and have a warranty. 
But what they've done is they've gone to a single shock. How that makes it hard is they've put a tube inside of the body of this with holes in it and a, a shim that covers that hole. Got it works it. the exact same so as this. So it is doing this, but because of space, yes. it's inside of here. And now is yes. what you were talking about that you're able to manipulate on the other car in the kit you made. Exactly. So you've taken, well, they've taken, and they put in the bypass in here yes. because of space and probably money. Yeah. And then that's something that you can modify to, to help the tune as well. And the reason why you want both though, mm -hmm. is it's easier to tune this than it is an internal bypass. This gives you external adjustments. Exactly, okay. that's fixed and it has less volume of oil. Mm -hmm. It's a smaller piston yeah. because it's a tube inside of a tube. So if you have a three inch coilover, mm -hmm. you have another tube with a two and a half inch piston on it. So therefore on the back of this shock, if this was an internal bypass, it's a two five shock, but it would have a two row piston. Which so even though less. the shocks look big and burly on those cars, a lot of times they're actually smaller. Space. And you're asking more of them. Yeah. So you're asking a shock that's three inches with a two and a half piston to do the same thing that this shock is with way more oil, more control, because you have five inches of dampening force, yeah. and Across you can the do pieces. them yeah. together and manipulate it externally. And it allows, I'm sure, finer adjustments where you can use one for more high speed dampening, one for more low speed, yeah. where you get big holes and stuff out of one, a bunch of whoops out of the other, and you can kind of more, and that last 20% we talked about as far as tuning, right? Yeah. Is there anything to look for on the springs or the outside of the body or anything that tells you if you need service? Yes, what you can do is on these, you can look, you can see on this one, this is starting to rub the body and it doesn't have an AGM slider that has a plastic inner liner that allows it to wear the plastic rather than the body. You can look on the inside of the coil and you wanna see where that's rubbing. If it starts to make a flat spot on the coil, what it's doing is it's taking material away from that coil. These work like a sway bar. Mm -hmm. It's hard to imagine, but this is a sway bar that's been coiled up. Okay. If you take material off a sway bar, it's now gonna sway more because it's a smaller so you're diameter. Changing the rate. You're, changing the you're rate. also probably hurting the structure where maybe yes. it could break over time. It can break, it can lose its length, okay. and all of a sudden you're, it's sagging. If you see your car, it used to be 16 inches off the ground, mm -hmm. now it's 12. So springs are, spring and spring maintenance is every bit as important as shock maintenance. 100%. So it's the body wear, it's looking at the inside of the springs. I'm sure if you can see the crossovers wearing, you know yes. the springs are hitting that way too. Yep. So these are all really good indications of what wear is. Now, is there, so someone, Someone now knows how the shock works. They know what to look for. They know if their shocks need maintenance, but they go to the rebuild process. Is there specific products or, or accessories or brands or things that you like to stick with for reliability or to kind of improve performance? Yeah, yep. we usually stick with the Eibach springs, as you oh, can you see. A, you got a couple here. We got a couple. Yeah, um, a we need to make sure we have every rate because as you see when people advertise an Eibach spring kit. Mm -hmm. Well, an Eibach spring kit is their rates that they think work on a side-by-side. -side. Mm -hmm. We can manipulate that with different rates of their spring. It looks the same, but it reacts differently. So we usually stick with Eibach with springs mm -hmm. we service fox king walker shocks so as far as brands they all kind of do the same thing just different colors they're all yeah really quality parts okay yes they are and then um, we replace the spring sliders with agm sliders mm -hmm. you'll get you're able to rebuild those and just replace portions like the plastic in our inner sleeve mm -hmm. so that you don't have to replace the whole thing. Just the cheap sleeve inside there preventing it from wearing a body. Because if okay. it eats this body, you have to replace the whole body, which is We're a lot talking of... thousands if you're yes. doing it all the way around yes. the corner. So there's a lot of value there too. Yep. Dude, that's a lot to take in, but it's all freaking amazing information. And it looks like they just wrapped up our shocks. So I think we are ready to grab these things. I'm super stoked because the car handled like absolute dog shit at the 500. <laughs> And it sounded like you guys found all kinds of things wrong inside these. Not so wrong, just different. Different. Everyone Not the way you would own, do it. Yeah. Own way of, of cooking. Yeah. You know, yeah. all it is is food and we spice them a little different. Got it. So we got a we got a pie. We had cookies before, we're gonna give this a rip. So we'll grab all of these. We're gonna go put them on the shot on the car. Not on the shocks, because these are the shocks. We're gonna go put them on the car and uh, give it a rip and see how it goes. Sounds good.
we go out in the desert and have some fun. Well, we're gonna go throw these things on and then we will see you on the desert. Perfect. Thank you so much. Game on. Great to see you. People can find us here in El Cajon at 916 Fessler or on Instagram at SDG Suspension. And make sure you subscribe to AGM. How's it? <laughs> Shameless plug. Yeah.